So today I want to talk about something a little bit different. I want to talk about Lookism, a series that I read a long time ago, and it really did a different take on the whole bully trope. For instance, it was a lot darker than normal, and it also had a very different twist to it than what you would normally see from those type of storylines. But on top of that, I want to talk about some of the good news that's came out rather recently with Lookism, which is what kind of sparked this video in the first place, and that is the fact that it is getting an anime this November on Netflix. Now, let's let's get into that. Lookism is a webtoon series, and I think everybody knows how much I really enjoy webtoons. There's a bunch of different webtoons I've covered on the channel. I've covered, like, you know, Hardcore Leveling Warrior, An Ordinary, Purple Hyacinth. I've covered, you know, just, like, Mythic Item Obtained recently. You know, I'm going to be covering Lookism with this video. There's countless series I've covered, like Your Throne as well. And so because of that, I've always been a big fan of these different type of series. I've seen them over the years pop up here and there. And there's a lot of major series that I definitely still need to dive into. And to just be completely transparent with all of you, I am not fully caught up with Lookism. But it is a series that I have read and got pretty deep into, and because of the anime coming out very soon in just a few weeks from now, I kind of dived into the early chapters to kind of get a refresher on just the origins of Lookism, kind of where it started, and just how much it's changed in the latest stuff of the content, at least where I'm at, and just see the progression, the just the overall progression of the artist and offer to just also the story in general. It's just a really amazing thing. But also, you get to see kind of like how the Lookism anime is going to be and what content it's basically going to adapt. And so, I guess, let's talk about that. Lookism is a series about a boy that starts off being bullied. It's a traditional story when you think about it from that circumstance. A guy gets bullied in the middle of school, nobody's helping him, he's all alone, he's isolated, he's by himself. It's a very sad story, and so instantly when you're reading this type of story, you get that emotion swelling up inside you like, you know, I want to cheer this man on. I want him to get out of this dark, depressing state, and I want him to be happy. I want him to have a good life. That is genuinely what I think many would feel if they're reading stories like that. And so when you see the MC getting bullied throughout the, the first few chapters, you're like, can anything get better for him? Can life get better for him? Because it gets so bad to the point to where his mom... She comes to the school and she starts to try to yell at the bullies that's bullying our main character, Daniel, and he basically reacts in a very negative way towards his own mother that tried to help him. The only person that's really helped him in his entire life because he just doesn't want to get treated even worse, and he felt embarrassed that his mom had to say something or do something, and, you know, he snapped at her, which is just, it's tragic and it's sad, and it's just a really sad beginning to the story, and when you see just how it slowly builds up to that point, obviously the only way for the character to probably have some form of good life at this point is to move away, is to go to a different school, etc. And so that's exactly what happens around chapter 2 to chapter 3 of Lookism. But here's where the twist starts to kick in. The twist of Lookism is that the main character, obviously, he, everybody judges him for his appearance. People don't like him, they, they think he's ugly, etc. They, they, they all go at him and treat him just incredibly different because of his appearance. But at the end of chapter 3, he switches into a new body, and this body is a handsome young dude that literally looks like he is just a role model, like a model itself, like he's perfect in every single way. And because of that, as soon as he goes out in public, people start to treat him incredibly differently. His personality has not changed. I want to make sure that is kind of, you know, hammered in a little bit. The personality of our main character, Daniel, has not changed, but his appearance has. But as soon as his appearance changes, Everybody treats him very differently, and that is the fundamental concept of what the story tries to convey to the audience, is that it's about a character that obviously, thanks to just how he looks and how people perceive him, they instantly, you know, ridicule him and put him down. But as soon as he looks like a looker, everybody doesn't care. They don't care how his personality is. And the harsh reality is there's a lot of people out there that is like that. It's the truth. It is 100% the truth. It's the harsh reality of just what the story is trying to convey. And it's very sad. It's a very dark and sad story with how it starts because you see very quickly early on that the MC realizes people do view him differently. Like, he could always probably tell, but as soon as he was able to swap from body to body, like a good looker to a, you know, his old body, realize just how differently people actually treat him. And 
And it's sad because he probably always knew, like he always knew that people looked at him differently while he was getting bullied in his life. But when you actually have that ability to swap from to and from like your old and to new body, you will definitely see how people treat you differently. Even if your personality has not changed and you're the same person and you have the same interest and everything, just because of how you look, people will treat you differently. And that's that's a sad reality of it. That's why I said this series is very dark and depressing because that that's a hard pill to swallow. It really is, and that is the truth. There's a lot of people out there that do treat people like that. So, Lookism is quite the series. It really tries to tell a story through how a character has to live with their self, both selves, both sides, and how to be able to fit in within society. So, I guess let's kind of discuss that, the ability, the power of, you know, our MC being able to swap through body to body. So, around Chapter 3, basically, it's not really explained, but he somehow gets another alternative body, which is, you know, the handsome one. And this body, when he is awake in that body, his old original body is asleep. Basically, cannot be, you know, woken up unless, you know, it's forcefully woken up, etc. Or if he uses his new body to go to sleep. And then he swaps his consciousness to that. Basically, what this means is, is that he is always awake 24-7. He swaps bodies, but he's always awake. And the other body just becomes a husk or a shell that just lays there and just doesn't do anything. So, theoretically... Theoretically, if he was to, let's say, never go to sleep, which obviously everybody needs to sleep, but if he was theoretically never to go to sleep, he would never swap back to another body. He would stay in whatever body he wishes, which is very clear which body he probably would choose. Which this brings up another question. What happens if one of the bodies die? He does state this around chapter 3, chapter 4. He doesn't have the courage to obviously kill one of his bodies, but the question is, what would theoretically happen? Because when you think about the concept of what wakes him up and how he swaps bodies, this is how it works. Either he goes to sleep, or he's forcibly woken up either through a slap, punch, whatever. So, if someone uh, was, let's just say, break in to his house, okay, and one of his bodies was asleep and to try to kill him, he might wake up thanks to the shock of being killed briefly, and then he might perma-die. I don't know. Or would his consciousness shift over to his other body? That's not really explored, it's not explained, but it definitely is set up for the future of the story. And it leaves it in your head like, is he eventually going to have to make a decision which body he wants to choose? And will he choose his original or his new body? And I think that's a really cool concept that kind of goes along with the themes and morals of what the, you know, the story is trying to really teach its readers and what the author is trying to convey to its audience in the first place. Now, anyways, one thing I do want to say, I want to talk about the anime since it's one of the big topics of why I even make in this video. If you look at the anime trailer, which I really recommend you check out the trailer if you haven't, I'll have it probably linked in the description. The trailer showcases all these events I've talked about in this video. It showcases basically the character being bullied, to the new body, how people view him, etc. Even some elements of fighting, which I'll talk about that in a second. But you can basically see all the stuff I've you know, covered in this video that you see in the anime trailer. And I really like seeing how much flair and life was added to the anime trailer. Because you can see that early on in Lookism, thanks to it being very old, there obviously is, you know, it, you could see that the artist has improved a lot with the newer content. But when it's old, obviously things are a little, little, a little bit more, I guess, basic or standard. And seeing it brought to life within an anime is definitely amazing. And I just love the way the anime adds so much flair to it, so much life, and the voice acting as well. It's incredible. It really does. I, I like the way the anime looks, and I'm excited, because I'm always a big fan of seeing, like, Webtoon branching off into anime. It's why I really enjoyed, like, you know, Tower of God getting an anime, why I enjoyed God of High School. I really am crossing my fingers, and please, Webtoon, hear me out on this. Please make an unordinary anime or hardcore leveling warrior anime. Hell, make it your throne anime. One or the other. Like, any of those three. I would absolutely love to have those series animated because, like, seriously, you would make some bank on an unordinary anime or a hardcore leveling of warrior anime or your throne. Like, seriously, your throne would be for those fans of what, that likes political romance and stuff. If you like Game of Thrones, if you know you like a... Uh, fantasy, battle fantasy stuff, obviously people love Hardcore Leveling Warrior, and if you love stuff like My Hero, but you want more of an underdog story with a nice commentary on school life, an ordinary is really good for that, I, I really, really would wish those would get anime one day, but anyways, get back on topic though, 
Lookism, it's great. It's an absolutely great series, and I'm glad I went back to reread the origin of it to see just how much the series has grown in the current stages of where I'm at, and it's amazing. It's always amazing to see just the growth of an author. So I guess I'll leave it at that. Um, if you want to read the series for yourself, link is in the description, and if you also want to watch the anime, FYI, for any information, comes out this November, I think November 4th it's coming out, so just not that long away, like a few weeks away, but uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching, if you enjoy my content, please subscribe, leave a like, and chibi out.